Welcome. I have so much to talk about today. You know, I may, after today, speak more about this painting at another time, but next week I want to speak about Vienna because there are people in this painting from Vienna that I want to speak about in person. So, should we begin? Let's begin. Welcome, everybody. Oops. Oh. <laughs> there goes the painting. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Okay. I think I got it right. Is that good? Yes, if the, if the hook is on top. Oh, okay. I will never paint a painting of this size again. <laughs> On the other hand, my muscles have gotten better because of it. Mm. Okay. I'm going before I speak about this painting. I need to tell you about something very wonderful, which I will talk about at length eventually. But right now, I want to tell you one of the best things that happened to me. And it connects with this. I changed. Suddenly something happened and I learned things as a reward for not giving up. And I have to go back from this to some time ago. I always, when I could walk, when I could drive, when I could go into Manhattan, I, I would always go to the, Met, the museum and I would go first to the Rembrandt room and I would look at the Rembrandts because I don't think anybody in my knowledge ever painted colors the way he did when he painted a dress or a jewel the colors were unbelievable and so I would always look at his work and learn except one day I went and I stopped in front of a painting that he had done of a woman and something magical happened she looked at me thank you Jesse thank you um, Jesse and Angel are here today, and it's wonderful. And Kenny's running the program, and I'm so grateful. So let me go back to the Rembrandt. There was something that I couldn't understand why this had never happened to me before, because all Rembrandts are great. But for the first time, in my going into that room after years of looking at the Rembrandts I didn't look at the quality I looked at the painting I looked at the woman and I recognized her and I realized in life it's not what you see it's how you interpret it and for once I wasn't looking at the beauty of his painting. I looked at the woman he painted. And I thought because of that, someday I will have to learn how to do somebody so that they speak to me. So that they literally do what that woman did and be a presence. And in this painting, it suddenly happened, not with the technique, because I don't think I'll ever be able to do a Rembrandt technique, but I will keep trying because I'm gonna live very long. And what happened, and because of my grandchild, Jesse, I knew I had done it. I wanted to do Eric because 
Eric is the reason for me doing these paintings. He always said, you've got to fight back. When people tell you how terrible everything is, and that people are so bad, you know better, but you have to prove it. And Eric used my painting as a tool for saying, do it with your paintings. And it meant if I did Eric, I took his photographs that I had. So I have so many photographs. And all I could think of, I couldn't think of Eric sitting because he always ran. And he always had to finish this and finish that. And when I said that I wanted to paint in the city, and sit in the street, he said, do everything you want to do as long as you don't hurt somebody. Do anything. Just promise yourself you'll never hurt anybody. And I was thinking of that. Eric is not finished in the painting, but I got him. And I told the family, I did it, I I got the real person. And Jesse, who knew Eric in a way that we only know people when we know how special they are. And each of them knew that the other one was special. And Jesse ran in and he looked at it and he said, Wow! And when he did that, and he stood there, I said, Hedy, you did it. You did it. And I remember calling Ed, who is coming on Thursday, and I called him and I said, when you come, you'll have to pose again. Because I learned something. I learned not to think of technique anymore. I learned when I paint to feel the person and paint how I feel. So, as I said to Eddie, be prepared to pose. And he's right here. And here is my Eric. And he needed to be with a dog. He loved dogs. As a matter of fact, when he, when he was rescued, by the American army from the concentration camp and he was free. He found three stray dogs and he took them, kept them with him all the time and he would stand in a street corner and he would yell, come here Hitler, come here Goebbels, come here Goering, because Goebbels and Goering were with Hitler. Top top people and he got such joy out of naming those dogs come here Hitler come here come here Goebbels come here Goering and so this painting is going to grow in the way I did Eric I will think of each one of you even though I'm working from photographs but I have known every one of the people in here. And I put them in because they do only good things for other people. I think I've never painted somebody whom I didn't admire for one reason or another. And if they did things I didn't like, I either dropped them from my life or I told them what I didn't want to join in, which is why I don't gossip. Now let's go to the painting, okay? Um, Angel, please could you reach me the one that's right there? Thank you. And then Jesse will bring the other one, not yet. 
Okay. There came a day when Eric said, I'm going to come with you because there's so much work. You have to carry so many things and you have to drive into New York. And when you're tired of sitting for hours on a street corner, you've got to put everything back into the car and drive home. I'm going to go with you. And I said, Eric, you're too old. And he said, yeah, but let's try anyway. I can always stop. And he went to Grand Street with me. And could I, Jesse, could you bring me the other one? Let's leave it here first. Don't, don't leave it on here. Oh, it's not wet. Oh, oh, you're right. No, you're right. It's not a good habit. Thank you. This is Grand Street. I got it. I got it. You got it. Thank you. This is... Thank you. This is Jesse and this is Grand Street. Okay. Um, I began the building you just saw. And he grew into this. But on the first day, when I sat there on Grant Street, for people who knew me, because it's the Lower East Side, and I painted so many paintings there. And people came over and said, would you put me in there? And Eric said, not unless you write a story of how you fit in here. What makes you belong here? And I said to Eric, Eric, I'm not going to do that. I won't be able to paint because nobody's going to do that. And he said, let's see. Let's do a history of who we are. So all of you who are having to give me a story of the big painting you're in, there's a reason. Eric wants a story. He said, when we're all gone, they should know that it's we're not only the people you read about in the newspapers who preach hate. And the first person, we gave everybody cards which had my name and and a picture which I had done of a Lower East Side painting of Jonah Schimmel, which was a place that sold knishes, which I loved. And it's in the Museum of the City of New York, so I figured that's a good introduction to say Museum City of New York. Mm. And the first, and we gave people cards and somebody called immediately when we got home and said, she gave her name and she said, I'm one of the people who would like to be in the painting. Is it okay if I give you the writing that I did of, for my professor? about how I got here. How my grandfather smuggled himself into a ship because Chinese people were not admitted into the United States. They were only admitted if they had a job lined up which nobody else would ta take. So they built tunnels for trains to go through and when are you going to be painting again? And I said, we'll be there next Sunday. And that Sunday, she came. A young Chinese lady. And she came with her father, her mother, her sister, and her Scandinavian boyfriend with blue eyes. 
and Eric gave me a nudge and he said, put them all in, all of them. Those are the people we want. And they are in there. And I'll tell you later, but first I want to read to you about this painting. Kenny, would you, because my glasses are not here. Yeah, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Grand Street. We received an email from the Lower East Side Jewish Conservancy advertising a Lower East Side tour featuring the Bialystoker Synagogue. My husband and I decided to join the tour. The inside of the temple was magnificent, and the outside was simple and well kept, and obviously well attended. I'll take it later. But we also passed by two tenement structures, now used by the organization as a visitor center. We went inside and were told that the two buildings were about to be demolished as well as other buildings on that block. I so badly wanted to record this block within a painting before it would be gone forever. To me, this was one of the last remnants of a past vibrant culture. A few years ago, I had finished what I decided would be my last street painting of the streets of New York. The drive to and from the city was difficult and long, the sitting for hours on crowded sidewalks was exhausting, and instead of painting for the last few years, I had sorry, this printout is missing some words. No, let me take, let me take the um. Oh, oh, I'll read it from here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And for the last few years, I had been drawing the homeless and trees, which, like the homeless, were also trying to survive. Pencil was still my favorite medium, and it had been so good to return to it. My family saw how badly I did want to paint 400 Grand Street, and they urged me to do so. My husband Eric clinched it by saying he'd do the driving and would sit with me. We planned to only go down on Sundays when the drive would be easier, and to leave no later than 2 p.m. We did so. We left at 7 a.m., arrived at 8 a.m., and therefore we were always able to park nearby and sometimes directly on Grand Street itself. It was so great to be back on the street to paint. As usual, people stopped by to watch and to tell us their stories about the area. Not only was Eric the interested listener, but he came up with a thought that changed the purpose of my work. When people asked if I could put them into the painting, I said I would do that if they would give us the story of their connection to this area or to New York City in general. He said that we were trying to do a history of the people and the places of this amazing multicultural city of New York. And that is why this painting has become so important to us. We gave people our email number and the stories came. The first person whom I put into the painting was Felicia Carmona and her story traced her background and her life today. Suddenly we realized we were documenting more than the history of Grand Street. Sharissa Ng brought her parents, sister, fiance, and grandparents to be painted in, and her college essay of how her great-grandfather came into the USA. Patty Chow wrote about her life and work on immigration. Paul Radnofsky not only wrote us about his family history, but as an architect, he was always there to give me advice on perspective and structure. He also sent me photos which helped me understand the building area itself. Who decide? Because they can read it on their own then. Maybe so, just because we only have nine months. But I'm just going to read a little bit more. Yes. Um, there's the mother of Alvin Broom, whose story is of years within this area. 
the story of my friend of many years, Carol Hodkin, and of Laura Silver, who wrote a wonderful book about the history of Knishes. We met because she researched Jonas Schimmel and found out that I painted it, that it was in the Museum of the City of New York. And she contacted me, and I felt that she belonged into this painting. The red-haired, manage, the red-haired manager of the Comfort Inn, Josh Deras, the Schneez family with their two children, and many stories which will still be sent to me. I had always been wary of publicity. I did not want to be public property. And also, if you're not careful, sitting on street corners exposes you to dangerous converse- confrontations. Since the name which I sign my artwork with is not the name by which I'm known, I felt relatively safe. But when I was halfway through the painting, my son Ken presented me with a challenge. You said this and the temple you're finishing will be the last paintings done in the streets of New York. These paintings must become public. You have to let me expose you to the media. I gave in. Ken called the New York Times and my cover was blown. A wonderful writer, James Barron, and his photographer came to meet us on Grand Street and his article appeared in the New York Times and my anonymity was gone. Okay, now let me lead into this world now because in between were many paintings and if you look at my website, I have very few left to go and after that I'm going to show you drawings and things. We have a long way to go, but what I'd like to do very much is to tell you of a happening that happened just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I discovered a friendship that I don't know how to explain because it ties Eregan, even though he passed away about eight years ago. The Eric where Jesse saw the picture and said, wow. Kinha, who is very literate with computers, and they were refugees from China at a time when being Chinese was dangerous and her 17-year-old brother was murdered. They lived on Orchard and the Lancy, that area. And she contacted me and I asked her to write because she loved the area I loved. But not only that, she looked at it being 40 or so years younger than I am. So it's a Lower East Side that I did not know. And she spoke so much about her family now, her son and and the brother who was murdered. And I said, Kina, I'm going to put them into the painting, but I don't have much room to put three people because I had planned to put them in front. I was going to, the lady who's sitting on the truck, there's room for two people there. But there were three, and I just knew if I'm going to remember to look at people the way Rembrandt did, and see them. Her brother has to be with her and with her son. And I I moved this area up. Originally this was not going to be the building anymore. It was going to be a different part. But I I needed them visible. So I wrote to her and I said, I've got the three of you. This is Kina, this is her son, 
and this is a brother who was murdered and 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 I have him standing next to Eric and I have the two of you in front looking at him and you know what she said she says I would love it because Eric would take care of him and at that moment they became real because Eric would be Eric counseled in the prison system because he knew what it meant to have unbelievable pain and how to live through it and I wrote back to her and I said Eric would take care of him and so here is the Eric where Jesse said wow and when Kinha saw it she said she said I feel safe knowing that he's with Eric and you know when I finished them because I have a long way to go they have no features yet they don't have lights and shadows they don't have a background but she understood like Jesse did when he said, wow, this is a real Eric. And she looked and said, he would take care of my brother. Okay, let me just let Kenny see these pictures. Sure, I'll show them. If anybody has any comments, feel free to write. Oh, yes. Do the comments first. Do the comments first? Sure, okay. Okay, Alicia's here and Eileen is here and um, thank you. Alicia says I can hear her and she sounds wonderful and Eileen says so too and Paula says Eddie looks gorgeous and Tammy Smith is watching and Hernan says I have a crisis center pride for youth board meeting now but I'll listen later. Much love from Hernan. Carol Hotkin is watching. Marsha Bard Isman says you look gorgeous and red Hetty with heart eyes. Greg is watching. Kent Almquist from Sweden says, Good evening, Hetty. And Paula says, you, Hetty, you did it. And Deeds is watching. Deirdre is watching. And Tammy Smith says, The painting is growing so much. And Tammy Smith says, Not gossiping is a very healthy rule. John Terracuso hugs from California. Carol Hodkin, love this. Laura Silver, Hetty, you're gorgeous. Laura Silver, aw, oh, yay, love, love. Amy Lauren set, is watching and she says, Sorry I'm late, Hetty. Verizon repairman here. You look beautiful as always in the color red. And I hope to visit you before the new year. Oh, please. And Carol Hodkin says, beautiful story. And Eileen says, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing this poignant story, Hetty. And Tammy says, we are all touched to be in a painting with your dear Eric. And Alicia Edwards said, I used to sit with Hetty when she was painting on 59th near the plaza. Many, many conversations. And she said, it's like sitting with her again. And those are the comments. I'm going to email you tonight. Because, because if you look at my website, you'll know the painting that I was doing when you sat next to me. Oh yes, the photographs. We'll just look at some of these yes. quickly. This is the two of them. This is... Oh, his brother? Or her brother? No, no, no. His brother is an old photograph. But these are both... Yes, okay. And this is just his brother, but it's not okay. clear enough for me to use for the face. This is his bro her brother who was murdered. 
if that's no 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 this is her and this is her son who's a musician sorry folks beautiful 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 my apologies okay this is her brother yes this is her brother yes and he's for Eric to take care of him so they'll have each other because he protects the people. And this is? That's him, that's the brother. But it's not clear enough for me to use. But the other one is, the old one is. And everybody, I think this is it. Thank you for being my audience. I love you. Tonight is a wonderful day because, night, because Jesse's here. And Angel is here, and Kenny is running the program, and I am so blessed.